Uh, good morning, everybody. Like, I hope you had a good trip to Tübingen and, uh, I don't know, first uh, nice morning or perhaps yesterday afternoon already here. Um, yeah, I guess uh, there's a lot of people involved uh, into the summer school, not only us here, like the instructors and Efi, but also um, the local orga team who prepared like the, the breakfast and the coffee. So yeah, thanks first of all to everybody for, for making this, this possible. And yeah, thanks to all of you for like stopping by here. And I hope we're gonna have a, a fun week with like metabolomics and science and uh, hopefully also some, uh, I don't know, other fun activities. So yeah, just to give you a very um, brief introduction about like uh, Tübingen. So it's like a very old um, student and university city in Germany. Um, once, uh, or like some people say Tübingen does not uh, have a university, it is a university. And I think it's uh, very clear when you look at the population here. So I think like uh, almost a third of the people in Tübingen are students. And like most of the people in town are like somehow affiliated with the university. Um, yeah, it has a long tradition. You may have seen some of like the um, sites already, like the castle or like the old town or like the beautiful Necker Bridge. If you have not, I hope you will have time this week to also explore um, that side of Tübingen a little. Then yeah, like the university, as I said, is like one of like the oldest universities in, in Germany. It has a, quite a, um, a good history in, in research. Um, so it's uh, one of the top universities in Germany. And also we have like yeah, this, this nice campus here and like in particular this nice building, the Geo and Environmental Science uh, uh, Center or GUZ. Uh, where, yeah, I think we're all sitting right now. So that is all within like the Morgenstelle campus. So this is one of like the, the places in Tübingen um, where the university has the natural science facilities to yeah, just give you like a little orientation here on the on the lower right. Um, so we are in the geo set. So that was still when it was under construction. Fortunately, now it's finished. Very important for you. Uh, just across the um, the yard, there's like the mensa, how we call it. So this is the cafeteria. This is where we're gonna have lunch um, later, and where there's also like I think till three every day, like a cafeteria open. So if you don't like the coffee here, you can get a, um, a, a better one perhaps like over there or like some other snacks, whatever. Then uh, our lab is like located just behind the Mensa, like uh, in like the small building. And then there's the biology department also like just next door where like the CMFI um, headquarter is. Um, yeah, it's been pretty overwhelming to see like the interest in the, in the summer school. We had uh, more than 100 applications from uh, uh, which, yeah, we uh, sadly had to choose like a subset because we could simply not house that, that many people effectively here. So yeah, we picked um, 50 participants and they're like the lucky ones, I guess, uh, are here. And hopefully the ones that we could not offer a spot uh, attending at least remotely. So we decided to stream the thing um, finally. So to, yeah, like enable everybody to, to attend even if it's just remotely. Uh, yeah, it's from 21 countries, which I found was, was pretty um, remarkable. And yeah, like when you look at the, at the stats from our like initial survey, uh, we see quite a diverse uh, um, scientific backgrounds um, with like a little focus perhaps like on uh, natural products and microbiology, but also very strong in environmental science, plant science and health sciences and so on. Um, also on the, on the personal background of people, we have, I guess, a nice mix of, uh, um, yeah, mainly grad student, but also like postdocs and, and uh, staff researchers, uh, also a couple of undergrads, master students and uh, PIs. So that's great. And then also from their experience levels, um, it's a lot of like beginner and intermediate. Uh, we also have some absolute um, beginner with, with no prior experience and fortunately also a couple of experts. So I think like together we can help each other and, and make this a successful um, workshop. And then also, um, which I think I'm, I'm particularly uh, proud of, uh, we have a diverse background from like a socioeconomic perspective. So in fact, like 17% um, we uh, requested a waiver. So we did not charge any, any fees for them. So to enable them to attend and yeah, like everybody who requested a waiver and who was selected to come here 
independently from that, we, we granted that. So, so that's awesome. And then, yeah, like most of the people are from academia and we also have a couple of uh, um, industry attendants. So yeah, and to be completely transparent, so what did we do with, with that money? So I think like for a summer school, we're hopefully on the, on the lower end of like the, the cost. So really like uh, a big motivation is to, to remove barriers and enable like as many people to attend as possible. And yeah, like, so the money was mainly used to pay like the travel and housing costs for, for the speaker. And then also like um, goes directly in like the food and drinks we um, gonna have the, uh, the rest of the, of the days. So it was roughly like 12,000 um, euros total that we made. And yeah, we have a hopefully small surplus, which we then will hopefully use for like the next summer school uh, next summer, which I don't know, maybe at the end, we will announce this already. So the idea is to have it like every year moving um, from city to city. Yeah, like so with the with the food, um, I hope you enjoyed already some of the things. So I hope we can also give you like a little German impression of uh, typical uh, foods. So we have sparkling water, which I think is very typical. Then we have Apfelschorle, which is another, uh, I would say, common drink and Club Mate. I don't know if you heard it. I love it. It's uh, perhaps like the most effective uh, high energy drink for parties and uh, working and hackathons. And then obviously uh, coffee and tea. Then there is in the morning, uh, I don't know if it's a local specialty, but I think it's also very typical. It's Franz Brötchen, it's like a sweet, little it's thing it's from okay and then uh, uh, that for sure is like a very Swedish thing uh, Swedish thing so excuse uh, my <clears throat> lack of knowledge there eventually because I'm not from the region here but yeah like we have Salem they will be served in another break and that is kind of like a little roll uh, with like different toppings uh, with meat uh, uh, vegetarian and also vegan and we have some spreads you can you can eat this out and then obviously some some bananas and apples laying around um, for lunch, um, in your registration uh, card or like your, your name badge on the back side, there should be um, a Mensa card included. And that is actually a really important item because in order to purchase any food at the Mensa, you will need this card. You can't pay directly with cash. So yeah, please uh, keep that card. And we put already like a, a 15 euro starting balance on it. So we don't uh, completely overwhelm like the people there uh, charging it, it probably won't last for like the whole week. So eventually at some point you, you need to recharge it there. There's a little info point inside of the Mensa was a very nice lady that uh, where you can like just recharge it. Um, I think they only accept a card, credit card or or whatever. So yeah, um, I hope that's a, a good way to um, cover the lunch there. Um, yeah, it's a uh, Mensa food. It's it's okay. It's not the best, but I think it's uh, it's good. And then, yeah, for dinner, uh, you're on your own. We have a couple of social events, like today, the icebreaker, and on uh, Wednesday, the um, the happy hour. But then, yeah, like for dinner, I would suggest to explore a little bit the city. Maybe we can go in groups and, I don't know, have a nice overall uh, end of the day then. Okay, very importantly, I put it up at the beginning already. It's really important that you all have internet on your computers. And there is uh, three ways to get internet here. The best one is EduRoam. So all of you who have a uh, university affiliation should be able to log into EduRoam with your university account. So I don't know, when I was first time here, my UC San Diego one just worked fine. So I hope that applies to most of you too. Um, then in case you do not have an EduRoam uh, login or it does not work, then I created a bunch of guest accounts. So I think it supports multiple logins per guest account but anyway, I created uh, 10 to be safe. So just pick a, a random one and, and we over, don't overload uh, a single account. And then lastly, if that also does not work, there's also the UT guest account, which I think you don't need any login information for, but this has, um, I think, limited um, uh, speed. So yeah, best choice, Eduroam, second guest Wi-Fi, and if that does not work, uh, UT guest. If you have problems connecting, maybe talk to some of us in the breaks so we can make sure to help you out there because yeah, to follow some of the tutorials is really important that you have internet. All right, and then um, a couple of important links. So you maybe wanna take a screenshot of that too or just go to this tiny URL here already because once you open that, you will get access to all the other links too. 
But yeah, so first of all, we have a program uh, online on our webpage. It's also printed on the poster here, but if you wanna quickly look it up, what's, what's, what's next, then I would recommend uh, opening this link. Then, um, yeah, we have a Zoom going on all through like the summer school. So if, if you don't feel well tomorrow and you wa rather wanna stay in, uh, I don't know, in your uh, hotel, then you could also like join in from Zoom. You can also perhaps do it right now in case that screen is not big enough for you and you want to see it on your um, on your computer, you can try that. And then, yeah, very important, this tiny URL will bring you here to this Google Drive. And this is, um, yeah, there's like this resources document, for example, which also has like all these links again. So hopefully we have some redundancy in um, interlinking like the different documents, but it also has uh, the participants list, where you see in which like uh, project group you will be. And then also it has the slides. And then very important, it has the project work result folder because this is not only a summer school, but also a little research project. Um, so yeah, then in the resources link um, in that document, you will also get again here, like links to download different software tools, which I think Robin also emailed to all of you already before. So we hope that we installed most of the software already. If not, no problem. Just just do it uh, somewhere now uh, because you will need those to to um, go through like the hands-on tutorials. And then yeah, there's also like our GitHub repository, which yeah, thanks to uh, Absur, Madeleine, uh, Philip, and Francesco, we have um, Jupyter notebooks for the statistical analysis that we will need on Thursday. So. Then, yeah, there you will also see the data for the example um, uh, jobs and also like some links to like example GMPS networks, but that we will also recreate as we go, right? So this is really just like a, an example. So that's how it's supposed to look like, but we hope that you can all um, do that by yourself. And then there is the data deposited on Massive too. And that is important because you will see when you when you open this um, FTP link, for example, directly in your browser or in your Explorer, um, if you have a Windows machine, just copy and paste that FTP link and you will, can get into like the file infrastructure. Um, you will see that there is like a lot of different labs uh, that we have data from. And that is part of like our hands-on example. And as I mentioned, that is also like a little research project uh, where we actually ask the question, uh, do we find like the same results if we send samples to different labs? And this is pretty cool because it's part of a, of a bigger project where we send dissolved organic matter samples to, uh, I think roughly 30 labs or so, and they all run them on their machines and then uh, send us back data. So this is an effort led with uh, uh, Jeff Hawkes and, and Carsten Simon. And yeah, like the, the basic question is, uh, if we run them all in this different like labs all around the world, are we actually able to um, to find uh, the same molecules, which we're not sure about? Um, so now we picked 13 of those data sets that we deemed uh, uh, to be of high quality. So they found most of the internal standards and so on. And the task now here during the course of the summer school is to actually analyze these different data sets. And then at the end on Friday, we're gonna do like little presentations and you will present what you think will be the molecular drivers and like, um, yeah, like uh, clustering in PCOA space and so on. And I'm, I'm really curious to, to see um, uh, what we find. And yeah, just to give you some background, what we basically did there is we, we took a dissolved organic matter sample and an algae extract, and then just did like a dilutional series um, with, a, with these two samples. So kind of like this mimics like a plume development in the ocean. So technically, when you think about like sample to sample distance, we should see how slowly that plume develops as we kind of like pipetted um, the dilution series. So again, I'm, I'm very curious to see what, what comes out of that. Oh yeah, one important thing for those of you who request ECTS from this course, that's also uh, what we will use for your evaluation. So there, if you check um, that you need ECTS, then make sure that you will present on Friday because yeah, we need to do like a little, evaluation of your participation here. All right, then, yeah, to like basically get an idea of what lab you will you will be analyzing, we made here like this participant lists uh, you can find um, under this link or in the Google folder under um, the participants file. And yeah, here's just like the first examples. So we indicated with data set 
what lab um, data set you will, will uh, be analyzing and then also what group you're in. And then like, I would suggest for the presentation on Friday that you consolidate uh, the results within your, your group members and maybe in one of the sessions we have allocated to, um, to work on the project, you can like meet in, uh, within that group. Okay, and then, yeah, like once you have like the outputs, so like the PCA plot and so on, then we would ask you to upload that information um, here in the result file, which is also again located in that Google Drive. So yeah, I guess uh, with that, that's, that's pretty much uh, it. So I'm very much looking forward to uh, have the summer school with, with all of you. And I hope beyond uh, the science and uh, uh, learning, we're also gonna have some fun and hopefully some good conversations. So we put like a lot of emphasis on, on uh, allocating enough time for breaks. So please uh, yeah, make use of the time to talk to each other, get to know each other and yeah, hopefully together we will have a, a fun week. So yeah, thanks again for coming and looking forward to the rest of the day.